wish everybody happy holidays. This is Let's Create a Better World. That's our show. I'm Bobby Elias, your host. We have a great show today with Darcini, who makes predictions on the weather, disasters, and today we're going to talk about the protest movement and what's going on in the world politically. Okay, the online address is Let's Create a Better World dot Todd Dean. So P is in Paul, always in Oscar, D is in David. Dean, like the bean that you eat, dot com. The 24-hour telephone line, you can call and be sure to tell your friends about it that aren't really into computers, maybe. This number is on, the last five shows are on there all the time, starting with the most recent show on button number one. The number is 701-719-0111. This show is all about holistic health, mostly research and science of all the new things going on. But we also talk about solutions for all the problems of the world, such as genetic engineered foods, climate change, and wireless radiation. We also get into many, many other things besides those things. We talk about change, and today we're going to talk a little bit about change as well as all the other things I mentioned. Darcini, I'm going to introduce her right now. She is a renowned medium, a psychic with a high accuracy rate. I know, I've clapped her. I've seen what she can do, uh, especially on weather and disasters, but just about everything. Darcini's given me a couple half-hour readings, and they've been very, very accurate, and I, I think that's just ready to break. One time she told me about a guy that was going to have a lot of problems, a guy I was working with. She said on a certain day, which was about 10, 12 days away, he was going to go crazy. Sure enough, he did. Now this, this woman's amazing. Okay. Uh, welcome to the show, Garcini. How are you? Thank you. Um, I'm great. <laughs> Thanks for having me on your show, Bobby. Appreciate it. Thanks. I love you. You're, you're always good. You're, you're always, you're like a friend now. More and more we're, we're talking with each other about different things. And uh, you're, 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 you gave us such a good show. So, okay. So we have a lot of information today on this show. We're going to start with me giving a take on the protest movements, civil rights, racism, corruption. I have a long history in, involved in fighting all these things. And I'm going to mention that first. We go back when I was a very young man in the 70s. We were all college and high school kids. Yes, we were very, very young. We started with a group of Latinos because Latinos were getting killed in the Vietnam War far more than anybody else because they're too brave. Too brave and it just wasn't good. And also I remember seeing so many different soldiers and Navy guys and Marines come with all their medals and their shiny shoes and clean clothes, uniforms, and women loved it. And these guys felt like they were on top of the world with having that uniform on. Okay, we're also going to talk about, um, let's talk about protest movements around the world, and I want to have Darshini come in with that in a minute. Hong Kong and many, many countries are getting really, really big, uh, Venezuela's had problems. Many countries in the Middle East are, I mean, it's just people are, are dying, people are fighting, people are, this it's going crazy. It's got worse and worse than ever. And so we're going to have to, we want to do something about this. And on this show, we're going to we continually talk about this. So we're also going to know that the women's movement has been big, big, huge on this show. We talk about it because um, women are making change, huge change. We talk about change a lot, too. That we also, many people have been, this racism against blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and other people. Also, seniors get left out. People of gender, different genders get left out. The poor people get out. The majority of the world is poor. And the people are dying health, hunger, weather, and the corruption of, of those countries that they live in, it's pretty bad. Okay, back in the 70s, as I said, the Vietnam 
Vietnam War was huge. It was too many people were getting killed. And I want to go. I need to go back on that in a minute. But I want to get some information. I want to get the take on. Uh, and first of all, let me reintroduce our guest, Darshini. Is a medium, a psychic. She's very, very accurate, mostly on weather disasters. But today we're going to talk about political issues. Okay, Darshini, your turn. Hi. Give us your take on what I about the, the protest movement. Yeah, I'm just going to add a bit more, if you don't mind, Bobby. Actually, it's not just a medium. It's a, what we call a clear cognitive, which is all those others. It's a medium plus a, um, well, I hate the word psychic, to be honest. I see the future, but it's also clear cogn- um, clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudio, plus I get it in taste and smell. And that's why I'm able to read. I don't go through other people. I go through energy, pure energy, uh, which touches all the dimensions. So that's why we, I, I'm able to read on a different level completely. Um, I hope you don't mind me expanding on that. Um, any, sorry, <laughs> thanks. But um, basically why I'm explaining that is why I'm able to see um, around the world on certain factors and with my predictions. And um, we both decided to start with the riots and racism, which um, is all important. And I had predicted in the when I uploaded it October last year, for this year, that there would be a lot of riots around the world. And I haven't checked it. I did a review quickly late, late, late last night. But um, I had mentioned Chicago and race riots in Washington, D.C., which have come true. Unfortunately, Chicago, um, more so, um, they've had some of the worst race riots um, in history. So what's going on is, and I had mentioned this, is that it's regressing, regressing back to where the 60s movements were. As you were saying, Bobby, Vietnam era as well, where um, racism is actually growing. Um, and I don't like promoting that, but we have to be I, real. And Right, Bobby? Yes, of course. Okay. I like that. What you say? Yeah, and um, Bobby knows I, I'm brutally honest in my readings and any predictions I give. So um, not to offend anybody, but... Um, you know, if this is what I see, I can only give what I see. But basically, this um, it's prejudice, and prejudice to me is cowardice, and it covers a lot of um, other things other than race. Um, it's a prejudice again and bigotry um, against all things, um, as you said. Um, uh, gays and poor things that you know um, it's all about the phobics that they people are now um, other minority groups are actually preying on and I'm talking about unfortunately the KKK and other um, other how can I say this other factions out there um, there are people in the political field which we'll call, talk about later, that are um, actually promoting this in, a, in their own agenda. And this is one of my beefs, is that the politics has become um, really down and dirty where they're using one group against the other and stepping back and seeing, and obviously it's working, stirring the pot. Um, and that's why you're seeing all of these... Um, attacks in a way where they feel the my certain people feel that they have the right to attack minority groups as in um the jewish the blacks the you know hispanics i mean all across the board and um bobby knows and i've talked about it a bit um in england i you know they don't like people of color um in anyone who, who looks like um who are brown, put it that way. And that was when I grew up in the 50s and 60s in England and 70s. So I knew what prejudice was. It's improved, but I still see that obviously it's not as bad as it is um, being in America, sadly, where um, it is now being um, on a hidden agenda on certain political fronts. And I don't know what your thoughts are on that one, Bobby. 
as, as far as political agenda. Mm-hmm. Well, I I agree with you with what you're saying there about the um, the the administration uh, was brought in by Ku Klux Klan, um, people that are white nationalists and other uh, Nazi types. These are great, and this is why we're having so many uh, race riots all over around. Is this is why we have when somebody uh, speaks at, at a rally, there's always a conflict, quite often a conflict between the regular people that don't like it and, and these, these people I just mentioned. And it, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, your, more of your thoughts, please. Yeah, it, it's, it's, that's what, um, and you know, I hate to say it, they're um, not necessarily just in the administration. Um, it's across the board. There are people in the pol- political field that are trying to fight against it, but they also use that as a tool. Certain other factions are a tool to um, use as leverage. Now, I'm just asking people, and I'm not telling you it. People know when I do readings or doing predictions, I never tell you what to do or think. Um, that's not my um how can I say, where I am here for or giving the predictions. I can only give you a prediction of what I see. But on a um, on a personal note, I ask that you stay in the middle of the road and look at all sides um, where there is a very slim, slim thread of truth um, about everything. But you have to really be a bit more... Um, discriminating is a good word and not be too heavily on one side because then you don't see everything because you are become myopic you get tunnel vision obviously so the blinkers are not going to help you because you're not getting the whole picture and you're not getting the depth of what the argument is or what a a future predicament could actually um, produce so I'm just asking you to back off a bit and be able to um, look at everything a bit more broadly. And this is what, um, you know, we talk about the signs and we'll talk about it later, what I'm doing the book. And I am trying to get it out this coming year because too many people are asking for it now. But basic books, should I say, but basically, um, if you are, um, I know there's a lot of anger out there. Sometimes anger is a good thing, like depression is a good thing, because it makes you want to think. Now, with um, the racism, the riots, and um, they're only going to get worse, by the way, um, just shortly segmenting into, um, uh, you know, let's go segue into what the um, predictions are for next year. There's going to be one at the end of the year that's kind of a really a rally, um, which is going to be quite, um, uh, how can I say, not violent, violent, but there's going to be a lot of people protesting. Um, But there's also, um, by March next year, I see um, in several, several states um, a high amount of uh, physical riots um, and protests. Um, The protests are only going to get worse next year. Um, There's a lot of hot under the collar but really red red um fiery people there where they're angry about um where you know the direction of where america's going um a lot to do with um there's something going to happen at the end of april sorry putting political here in a bit but um that's something at round about the 27th to the 29th of april there's going to be a, a political action by the administration which leans towards um, Russia, or at least the Russian front, where they're um, backing something of Putin's. And that's not going to be received well at all. It's going to be under the guise of something else, but that's not going to be very um, welcome. Um, so it's going to be creating a lot of uproar and um, new political backlash. Um, so there's a lot going on next year um, with everything, you know, obviously the elections coming up. And um, so anyway, basically riots are going to be just, um, I hate to say, getting far more violent and um, any little thing is going to blow up into something not as it should be. 
So, you know, to those people who don't want to be um, around, it's bad enough, and I talk about mass shootings and, ex, ex, you know, things like that, with people who are on the edge, and that's what one of the signs is, is literally they're on the edge, and suicide um, is not um, considered um, their violent action, put it that way, and that's why there were a lot of shootings, as I predicted, unfortunately, and in many, practically all the states I um, put in, um, in the predictions, and this year I'll try and put it in, but there were far more, and I didn't give everything, obviously, um, but basically you need to realize that you do not want to be in a situation where it, you cannot control the outcome, and in a protest or a riot, um, a peaceful, even a peaceful protest can um, have backlashes. So, um, especially in the range of um, college, school, college youth students to uh, even up, up to 32 to 45, there's a tendency where uh, rationale kind of gets thrown out the window and you get carried away. Remember, this is not, is, you have to ask yourself, is this your agenda? What is your agenda? Ask yourself that before going into something. Um, yes, support. I'm not saying not support, definitely not. But you have to support a cause, yes, um, especially for freedom and against racism of any kind or prejudice. Um, but you have to also um, start thinking a bit more rationally if you do not want the repercussions back at you. And that's what I'm seeing a lot of people um, especially in LA, um, across the board, in, some in Texas, um, Philadelphia, definitely Washington DC, New York, um, even Florida. There's all kinds of other protests and it's not only just on the politics either. So sorry I kind of went on there but hopefully um, that so, makes sense to a few people. Yes, Darcy, let me let our listeners know that we're talking to uh, Garcini, a well-noted psychic, with, and who goes into a lot of things, especially weather and disasters. And we will be talking about weather and disasters shortly, so hang in there with us. Um, I'm Bobby Elias, and our show is called Let's Create a Better World. We're on once a month on the archives only, and I'll give that information again at the end of the show. So hang in there with us. We're going to continue talking about, uh, let me mention a few things about the mass shootings. Um, that's really, really, the reason for mass shooting, mass shooting uh, party, at least young people that go out and kill a whole bunch of people, people don't realize this, but there a lot of them are on psychic drugs, uh, and there's so many horrible psychic drugs by the, the industry. Uh, the psychedelic, I mean, the, the pharmaceutical industry, is, and doctors are giving out so many horrible, horrible drugs to kids, even in the schools. Schools used to be, when, when I went to school, and maybe Darcy too, you know, if you did something bad, you go to the principal's office. Exactly. Like this, well, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and now, you go there, and, and the nurse will, will give you some drugs, and this is really bad. Uh, I agree. Your thoughts on that? You... Yeah, you know, Bobby, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I totally agree, because, um, you know, we got through school, there was... Um, people have ADD, et cetera, et cetera, all these things, but we did get through it, um, and it was a harsher environment, and I, I didn't go to school in America, I went to school in England, London, but it was um, a different type where it was even more harsh um, and uh, in their discipline. But um, we didn't have that recourse where you went to the nurse's office. We didn't even have a nurse's office, to be honest. Um, you just got sent home if you were, you know, hurt or something. But um, there's uh, accountability is a huge thing too, that they're not accountable for their actions. And um, I will be putting um, a chapter in, a huge chapter regarding um, the youth, not obviously every youth, but uh, certain youths who have that uh, ability where they are lost. And this also, you know, and you may not see this as a drug of choice, but it is a drug of choice and clear choice, and that is phones, where they are so involved and have a, a kind of closed relationship with their cell phones. 
and they do not know um, they haven't um, they don't socialize they only socialize via Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is at the moment but it's what I get concerned about is when we were out we we would um, you know have uh, arguments or um, fights I'm sure the boys would were but they sorted problems out face to face and you learn skills that way that you never learn on a phone so therefore they're literally being drawn into a very um, closed dark world of what they can only create where they have to be popular which is what the um, media not only the media really all these um, apps try and promote oh you know I'm beautiful I'm this I can do that um, so it's a very um, a few seconds of fame is what they're seeking for seeking about and that's what their um, young minds are driven and I've said this how many times in every prediction that the mind of um, a well the maturity of a boy he doesn't mature until 28 to 32 even and this is I got confirmation from other kids who I mean guys who are much older now and said yeah I didn't mature and that was then let alone now so we're actually regressing even more in certain ways of problem solving skills and girls they used to be maturing far faster I hate to say this, they're just as bad now. They're not maturing because now they're getting in far more insecure and that's where uh, they have this problem for the shootings where unfortunately I had predicted how many in California, five, which was more, more uh, and Texas and Washington, all of them I had predicted, um, Montana. But anyway, basically you have to realize that to talk to your kids um, get them to put the phones away and have developed social skills because they're not going to that's not a childhood and that's not a relationship having it with your phone I'm sorry to go on my soapbox here but it's so important oh, okay. because that is what's creating co-creating bad situations where oh I can sort this out with a gun which is not or a bomb which you know will eventually come too um, which will kill far more children. And this is a sad thing that innocent children are being, um, um, are collateral damage on this. Um, they had nothing to do with um, a child's development. Anyway, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, Darshini, uh, you mentioned uh, a couple of things. I want to add to why these kids are doing all these crazy things uh, video games. Mm -hmm. uh, the video. Yeah, they nothing but riot, violence, violence. And crazy, mm -hmm. killing, and ugly. I mean, really ugly wars and, and movies that come out and, and, and the mainstream movies that all over the country. And kids are watching these and they're getting ideas, they're getting thoughts. And then on top of that, when we have the, the leadership we have in this country, that as I mentioned earlier, Ku Klux Klan type people, uh, American Nazis, uh, white nationalists, these kind of people are. Um, just, they're out there, and they're, they're doing things, and they're saying things, and, but these video games are really, really bad, and nobody does anything about it. Television is horrible. There's so many bad things on TV and in movies that, that this is why young people are getting um, in, a, in a bad situation. Um, let's finish this up. Uh, take a few more minutes on, on what we're talking about, the protests. Please. What we just talked about. And then in a few minutes, we'll, we'll get into the weather disasters. Sure. Uh, um, thank this, you. Darcini, yeah, this is our Darcini. She's a medium and giving a lot of predictions that are really they work and she's right. Go ahead. Um, thank you. You know, you brought up very a huge valid point about the violence in game, games and in films. But I have to um, bring something up here. We grew up, um, at least I grew up in the fifties, sixties, seventies in England, right? Late fifties, and right. it was. Um, and in England, one, they do not carry guns, but um, they have the, the violence there um, was in films or programs was not only prolific, but it was more violent at, for that time than ever before. Even they would show, um, you know, dead bodies with uh, from uh, bombings from the IRA. 
So um, we right. grew up with that. Now we did not get violent ourselves necessarily. So um, it's not just the violence in the games, but they're interactive. That's what's the key here, is the games are interactive where they give them um, not the physical um, weapon or whatever, but they think they have power by playing the game. And that wasn't part of that age, um, which it has become now. And um, again, with an immature, um, not mind, but, um, you know, a child, not child, but anyway, an immature person, um, they haven't reached maturity and they don't have the, um, even the chemistry <laughs> Uh, at that point um, within their body. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. I'm just giving you what I uh, can see, is that they do, haven't de developed that chemistry yet uh, to be fully cognitive of their repercussions. Um, and that's why their problem sk uh, skills are literally using or adopting what they play, which is what you said. Um, so, you know, violence in itself, watching it doesn't, it affects you and get, it sensitizes you, but what with the games and when they're actually doing it, desensitizes you or desensitizes them um, because then they don't feel they have any kind of, uh, it's removed from their um, emotional um, interactions. So therefore they don't even think it's they're doing it um, in one way. Um, so they think they could um, get away with it. And of course, they want to be killed afterwards because they don't want to suffer the repercussions. But it doesn't happen always that way. They do survive it. But anyway, um, I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, uh, I just have another inflection on the, on the um, talks that we're having. Uh, but yes, and you know, one thing on the political atmosphere, just quickly, is that um, I will say that during the um for the elections and everything else on the political it comes down to bullying to be honest it's a big bully all yeah. right and um bullies uh can only have power and please listen to this bullies can only have power if they are backed up by others by movements, by other individuals who are not thinking. They're not seeing the repercussions of what they're doing to support a bully, okay? But if a bully is stripped of any support, and that means in Congress or in whatever, um, any senator or even the support of the group, um, you know, their backing and their beliefs, are they really wanting other children to be killed? No. So really think of what you're supporting out there. A bully cannot stand on its, his own, his or her own. And that is what I'm seeing, is bullying. And in the worst brutal and worst horrible way, you have to realize you can't just bully somebody and verbally abuse people and say anything you want um, because you will suffer the consequences. So please, um, everybody in Congress and Senate, um, please listen um, to what you're saying. Uh, really think about it. You're, you're not um, stand alone. Even if you be brave enough, you've been voted into office, be brave enough to stand apart and be truthful to yourself and the people you represent. So I will shut up now on that one. I apologize. No, it's okay. Uh, I want to just add quickly before we go into the weather disasters uh, about bullying. Uh, this is going on in schools yes. a lot, mm -hmm. and because and, um, and I also want to talk about the media in a second. But the children, uh, it, it's a major problem where kids are bullying other kids, and and the, the weaker kids, or the younger ones, whatever, are they have their lunch stolen, their money stolen, yes. they're beat up, and they're they're, they're told they're, they're just it's just terrible. And all this, I think, Darcy, this comes from the leadership we have in this country. But as I mentioned earlier, the Klux Klan types and the, the bullying that, like you said, and the, all the things that people see on TV, and these kids get ideas, and bullies are they're rampant, and, and they're our kids. We're talking about high school, junior high, and even grade school. Yes, kids grade school, too. That's what... Really, really bad. 
Well, you uh, know, you you have to. The parent has to really be aware of these situations, and this is what I'm concerned about. If they're not, and you know, uh, darling little Johnny, you know, is he really darling little Johnny? Um, but you know, if you start spouting um, politics in front of them, they are obviously conditioned. And you know, I teach over a hundred classes and um, a huge series of classes, about twenty um, plus. Uh, from the transformational series where you start looking at conditioning and you will be shocked at how much um, we are conditioned even before we're born we are conditioned so be careful what you say with in front of children or at least explain why you have an opinion one way or the other but hate is not an opinion it is a prejudice and you have to look at that um, it takes you know, and our generation, if not, uh, you know, a bit older, has also are becoming more and more sensitized to this, what they're saying and what they're seeing. Because um, World War Two saw, and, you know, there are people out there who literally, youngsters, young kids who don't believe there was a World War Two, and that um, the Jewish were um, literally... Um, you know, gassed and God knows the horrors of uh, Auschwitz, etc. But they actually believed that the Nazis um, didn't do anything. And that's what uh, actually the Nazi movement started gaining uh, ground in England in the 80s. It, back again, a resurgence, even probably late 70s. So um, it's still there. But it's again, it is a, it's a secret group not so secret at the moment, but anyway, that they will be prolific if they get support. But you have to realize this is for your future or the kids. They're not going to, they're only, it's only self-destructive. And you're, you're quite right regarding bullies. And it, it you know, I was bullied um, in school, needless to say, but it is just something that um, I will fight um, and I will speak up against. But that's what we need is people who will, who are not afraid to talk about it like you 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 know your show and how many times you must have brought it up in over the years um not only um in other things that you do so it's important that people do um be, just be honest with yourself it is not about the growth of a country the growth of a country is from the good from peace from your religion um, whatever it, it may be, it's um, good things, and it could be it could be a great country again if you look at those values, um, you know, giving and helping the homeless, and you know, so many other things that you will find to better not yourself but the world. Just look at that. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. No, no, no. I enjoy talking to you. This is great, uh, Darshini. Uh, we're going to get into, this is Darshini we're speaking to, this renowned psychic, always very, very accurate, uh, especially weather and disasters. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. One, two more things I want to bring up, uh, Darshini, and about what we're just talking about. Uh, going back, the history of this country, you go back to uh, when the, the people came from different countries to, and this was a Native American country. Uh, the Native Americans were all over this country and in numbers. Yeah. But these uh, people from different countries came and they, they took over, well, mostly Caucasians, of course, and they, they just dismantled and killed and tortured the Native Americans. Here's what their philosophy was this, Barshini. Mm -hmm. they, said, uh, they, they said, these people are animals. They're, 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 they're no good. They're, they're nothing. We need, to, we need to get rid of them. And they did. In, in fact, in the New England area, many years ago, some people think this was the start of uh, Thanksgiving, there were 700 Native Americans that were killed. Elderly, children, everybody. Oh, uh, just because of what I just said. And this was, uh, and then from there, they had a big dinner. And some people think that is the beginning of Thanksgiving. I don't know if that's true or not. I, we, I don't go back that far. The history books don't tell us everything. So, and then how the slaves were brought in. Oh, and how Native Americans, how even Mexican American Mexicans in Texas were were slaughtered and, and everything because of the Texas Rangers. So racism is rampant way back then. And that's why it's still here because the, this history of this country is violence, racism, 
and all the things that we've been talking about. One more thing, uh, Dracini, the media, the media yeah. owned by people like Murdoch and others. Yeah, they, they, please. They, they brainwash people into all these horrible things. Anyway, uh, any more thoughts on this? And uh, that, that, then we, we, we're going to move into the weather and disasters. Yeah, and um, you know, this is uh, quite apt because if there's such a thing as coincidence, which I don't believe, um, yeah, that may be 10% not coincidence. But this morning I was watching the news um, and we saw a an, an article where, you know, you're talking about media. Media is very agenda-driven. It's for sensationalism. It, it is um, not every single one, but it, they do gear things um, myopically on certain subjects. I totally agree. Now, um, I will say, and not to promote somebody, I do not promote people, but we saw from a fifth, and you're going to see this more, by the way, um, that's one of my predictions coming uh, for the future on the big predictions that I'll get out next week, is that um, there's a 15-year-old in California who uh, gets up at five o'clock in the morning and literally reads every newspaper across the board and even checks in at CNN and has um, affiliates all over the world, other children from 13 to 19 who report in and then she literally edits all the information and only gives one view of it you know, stripped down right. from political right. agendas or biases. She just does it one way. And that is incredible. And um, I'm going to look at that, but it is, and she puts it in a uh, very succinct form that she sends out. But that's what we need. We need children like that who are just so dedicated yes. to the truth. And this is what I would love to, and I know you, is to promote is the truth we um we're humans were driven and that's how we survived of domination and that's how the poor you know the american indians were stripped of everything and they're the true americans so you know it i cringe I, every time somebody says well i'm an american uh, true american the true americans were the american indians the well came in from eskimos really um, they came right. from Northern America. But anyway, basically, you know, we, we're we all transits, uh, transients into America. We're all immigrants. Um, wherever your history came from, whenever, whenever it was, people have to realize that. So stop segregating uh, groups because either we came by force, which are, you know, the, the black slaves and um, for their own, um, you know, landowners use um, which was horrific but there's also others as you said but it is now we are um, a united America so we should act like it and not not necessarily look to the past but appreciate the past but move to a better America that's all I'm saying that is a true America the powerhouse of the world is when you start really thinking and um, spouting what truth is and not segregating it and um, pointing fingers at, uh, you know, this one, that one, this religious group is better than the other one. No, it's just a difference of opinion. So I totally agree with that on, um, on the progression of America, which is, I don't know where yeah. it's going at the moment. Oh, this is great. Uh one of these days, uh, and I, I, I seem to have you on at least once a year, sometimes once every eight months. Mm -hmm. And I want to have you on again uh, to talk more about all these things we're talking about, the racism and the, the protests, the movements, and the change that's going on in this world. Yeah. But uh, especially is weather and disasters. So let's get into that. Mm -hmm. For our listeners, this is Darshini. She's really good at weather and disasters, 90% plus accuracy. She's already on this show given great things that have happened. So uh, don't forget... We do have a lot of listeners in New York City. Yes. And they've asked me to make sure that you talk about the East Coast and New York City. If you want to start with that or anything you want to start with, yeah. we still have time. Sure. So let's get to the weather disasters. 
Yeah, east and west. And I know that that's something. Um, I'll just launch in because um, I was reviewing all the, um, so far, the accuracy, which I kind of get a bit nuts so about. But quite frankly, I didn't do a review last year uh, for this year. But this year, I did quickly go through and the fires, I put a ton of fires that I said they were going to be was Yellowstone, and I'm just going over briefly of certain things, Washington State, New York, New York, yeah, all of this got Utah, Colorado, Florida, Texas, Missouri, California got 17 that I predicted, but there were actually 22, no, 28 fires that I could even see, so um, all over California, right. Los, um, and anyway, all of that, so we are going to get hit because I keep on telling people, because of climate change, even though somebody says there's no such thing, you know who, but there is, uh, the climate change is only going to get worse. So we're going to have an extreme swing. Now next year, it'll actually hit more um, towards later in August, like mid-August. Um, you will see some really um, huge storms round about um, Midwest, um, but going into towards New York um, and all of the, you know, Toronto, Michigan lakes and stuff, Virginia, uh, they're going to move and tornadoes. You're going to have, um, and I think I've got them, there are tornadoes. I thought I, I'm pretty sure I predicted in New York. Um, there may be one New, um, New York tornado, um, an F1 basically, but up, not in upstate New York, but basically in um um, near a button, just beyond Toronto, um, on the lakeside, New York. So it won't be downtown, but you will see some kind of water spouts. I'm seeing two water spouts during the year um, off um, off the coast in New York. Uh, not so much hitting Staten Island or anything like that. Okay, um, you're okay. you're going to. I know tornadoes. You think you're cr it's crazy, but water spouts and tornadoes. Um, there is one possibility, and um, apparently, um, and I do get feedback on some of them, where people have are nice enough to give me feedback, realistic feedback, not um, ridiculous comments. Those are deleted. I don't even post them. So don't even bother with those people. Um, I don't bother with them. Um, so basically, one had I told them about um, uh, F4 coming into south and north carolina and i said it'll veer and it'll hit uh just inside but you can read that comment i'll post it um it said it was dead accurate exactly where i told um and i'll talk about um hurricanes because i see that one hurricane is going to be a pretty nasty it looks like an f3 to f4 but it's hitting um with some wild winds off the coast of not only New York, but New Jersey, all of that, Connecticut. But it, um, as soon as it kind of hits Connecticut and Massachusetts, it breaks down, but it's still get a lot of rain in Maine. Um, but New York is going to get um, a deluge of rain. Um, uh, the rest I'm going to talk about because it's mostly hitting Florida, the Gulf um, of Mexico, etc. That'll be on the video. Um, separately, but there are going to be a lot of other um, potential hurricanes in through Los Angeles um, and San, not San Diego off the Gulf of California, um, Baja in Mexico. So it's going to really start stirring up a lot of um, bad weather there and hurricanes. Now, um, I will talk about... Um, Let's see, lightning strikes, I made a point of breaking out last year, um, that it's getting um, more violent um, on the lightning strikes, where it's actually, um, there was something in the um, news where it said it was the warming climate is killing coral reefs because of the, also the lightning. Um, so, but basically you're going to see more violent storms, so I'm really Please be aware. Remember, all I do the predictions for is not sensationalism. 
um, sorry if that's what you think, but that's up to you. Um, it's to try and get you prepared or being proactive about certain things. There's even one girl I did a reading for, and I hadn't realized that she and her friends and relatives would listen to the predictions because every time I would say there was um, huge snow uh, storms coming or um, really tornadoes of um, bad weather across the um, Minnesota, Wisconsin, well, the Midwest here, they would listen to it and it seems it was, I was dead accurate on that because she would always prepare and because she had an hour and a half drive every time, every, you know, one way. So they would always use that as a weather forecast. So I'm just telling you that New York is going to get stricken by a lot of um, flash flooding. Um, and I'm looking at Staten Island, um, things like that. So, and that would be rounder from July onwards. Um, Snowstorms are going to be pretty um, violent. They're not going to start until about mid. Um, they start, obviously it started, but they're really bad ones coming in um, late January to mid February, the really heavy duty ones where the snow drifts and uh -oh. we're hitting really, um, extreme cold um, where we're shattering records where um, the temperatures are diving down like crazy so be warned about that please use your brain and warm up we, we, have to, we have to let me get your contact information would you and i can continue this uh, I, usually i have two guests on each show i'm going to have you on again maybe in a few months to continue on the weather if you like but give your contact information for our listeners because we've got to wrap this up Sure. Thank you. So um, if you want to contact me, one is just really, um, first of all, the predictions will be uploaded hopefully by uh, within the next week or two. Um, and that's for all next year. Um, and then um, that was Darshini in spirit um, on the YouTube channel. Um, that's where all the videos are. The other thing is if you want a reading, um, I'll try and I'll make sure I'll try and fit you in. Um, but that is, you can send an email to me at Darshini, D-A-R-L, sorry, D-A-R-S-H-I-N-I -I underscore in spirit, I-N-S-P-I-R-I-T at yahoo.com. And um, I don't, wait. sorry, you got that? Uh, we, we, oh, yeah, I got it all. Uh, we'll, we'll repeat that again, uh, but, and, and I'll have you for more information online, but Garcini, thank you so much. We've got to go. Uh, yes, you're wonderful. Love you. And Love you uh, too. thank you for all the great information for our people. Okay. Thank you care. so much. Take care. Right. And thanks. Bye bye. You're very welcome. Thank you to all the people, especially Garcini, our New York staff, our LA staff, and our online telephone number is 701 719 0994. More music right now, Christmas time. Happy, happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Take care, everybody.